Okay. I'll read you the new last line I'm going to put in. Then we can get on with the business of lending a hand to our neighbors as they attack poverty and create economic opportunity for their people. Two. Yeah, still go back. <laughs> I hope I've got laughs. I don't know. Oh, I bet you do. You always do. Can't give them away in advance. I know. I know. I'm just teasing you. Masters Club. They, that's a group of people who are interested in public speaking. Oh, I know. I, I remember they go back to you. Sure. They're based in California, as a matter of fact. And they always want to know what your secret is with the teleprompter, when, especially when you're using the beam splitters in a large group. Because we get lots of mail from people who don't think that there is any teleprompter, and they don't understand that. And they always want to know, what is the president's tip? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you one thing that I do very consciously because of that is uh, I use that as I would if I had the notes down here and back and forth in each one of them. But I mark on the script, I keep a script so that, because in Europe on that tour over there, one of the speeches, uh, the teleprompter went haywire right in the middle and <laughs> I finished up using the script. But when there's a quote, I make a mark down, quote, and I found then that if I leave the teleprompters and come down to the script and do the quote from the script, it adds to the, sure, the impression yes. that I am <laughs> Absolutely. actually just uh, conversing with them. But one thing is when you're looking right to left on the teleprompters, how do you keep your place between right and left? Well, there isn't that much script on the teleprompter at one time. There are only a few lines, so that if you're reading like over there off of that one where it says live right. mic, by that time you can come over to here and you and can just pick, pick it right, it right up. up. Yeah. yeah. And you, you know, you just like reading from notes where you look up and do part of a sentence up, well, you've read ahead of yourself so that when you're saying the sentence from the thing there on the way across, you can be saying the rest of the sentence just that you rem remember it and catch the next one over here on, on this one. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think. Well, since we got so much time, have you ever seen the magic clock in no. the other room? I brought in California. Have you ever seen it? No. Anyone else that wants to see it? It's made by a man in California, and I've had it ever since I was They're governor. My watch you like me. to see it. It gives you the time all over the world where the sunshine is in the world. <laughs> okay. Yes. So Jack Swan's mother made it for me. Um, when you feel like you know you want to throw the phone and everything's right. going wrong, instead uh, doing that or kicking the desk, you take this, you grasp it firmly by the legs, 
and then you go damn it, damn it. <laughs> that gets rid of all of that. <laughs> Instructions are right there on the front. <laughs> And uh, here's a, for those of who have difficulty understanding the strange way words are used by politicians and the media, here is a glossary translating political rhetoric into plain English. Crisis, any situation you want to change. Bilingual, unable to speak English. Equal opportunity, preferential treatment. Non-judgmental, blaming society. Compassion, the use of tax money to buy votes. Insensitivity. Objection to the use of tax money to buy votes. <laughs> Simplistic, an argument you disagree with but can't answer. <laughs> Rehabilitation, magic words said before releasing criminals. Demonstration, a riot by people you agree with. Mob violence, a riot by people you disagree with. A matter of principle, a political controversy involving the convictions of liberals. An emotional issue, a political controversy involving the convictions of conservatives. Funding, money from the government. Commitment, more money from the government. Docudrama, a work of fiction about famous people. Autobiography, a work of fiction about yourself. Federal budget, a work of fiction about government spending. People's Republic, a place where you do what you're told or get shot. National liberation movements, organizations trying to create people's republics. Stereotypes, behavior patterns you don't want to think about. Reaganomics, media explanation of downturns in the economy. Ooh. Robust economy, media explanation of upturns in the economy. Constitutional interpretation, judges reading their own political views into the Constitution. Politicizing the courts, criticizing judges for reading their own political views into the Constitution. Proud people, chauvinists you like. Bigots, chauvinists you don't like. Are we getting too close? No, you're All right. okay. All right. Well, anti-war movement. That's disarmament advocates who know the idea won't fly under its own name. What was that again? Anti-war movement. Okay. Private greed, making money, selling people what they want. Public service, gaining power to make people do what you want them to. Innovation, something new. New innovation, something new by someone who doesn't understand English. <laughs> <laughs> Competency. Competence is described by the incompetent. Moderate Arabs, mythical beings to whom State Department officials make sacrificial offerings. Special interest lobby, politically organized conservatives. Public interest group, politically organized liberals. Accountability, holding teachers, public officials, and private business responsible for their misdeeds. Chilling effect holding journalists responsible for their misdeeds. No. <laughs> I don't know who thought that up, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> right. About three and a half minutes. Right. Better get serious and get in the mood. Oh, no. up for the White House. Sir? I, get, I say they're leaving us. The, the one said over at the barracks, I guess that means the headquarter barracks. Yes, yes sir. Right over here at 8 and 9 where they have those, uh, the Marine Corps parades for yeah. summer. Real fancy ones. Yeah. Yes, sir. He's going back over there for about a year, I guess. And then where did the other one say he was going? The other one's going to be discharged and uh, he's, he's going to roam the uh, world for a while oh. and explore the world. I thought that's what you did when you were a Marine. Yes, sir, we do that too. Two minutes. Stand by. Mic's on. My fellow Americans, Last Thursday, the House of Representatives voted on a proposal to send aid to the freedom fighters of Nicaragua, the men and women struggling against the communists who control their country. This proposal was designed to protect our own southern borders and give the freedom fighters the chance to reclaim their nation for liberty. It would have required no new money whatsoever, but would simply have used funds already approved by Congress for defense. By a margin of 12, the House voted no. 
Every day that this vote is permitted to stand, every day that freedom fighters are left defenseless against Soviet helicopter gunships, more lives will be lost and the dangers will grow from this Soviet beachhead on our continent. Already, the Soviets have armed Nicaragua with tanks, anti-aircraft missiles, and helicopter gunships. So-called advisors from the Soviet Union, East Germany, and Cuba swarm Nicaragua in the thousands and have helped the Nicaraguan communists to build an army and militia of 120,000, by far the biggest armed force that Central America has ever seen. But that is not all. The Sandinistas have openly admitted that they intend to spread their communist revolution throughout Latin America. But the Nicaraguan freedom fighters have handed the communists a setback. Although outnumbered and, and under-equipped, the freedom fighters have pinned down thousands of Sandinista troops and countless military assets. With their blood and courage, they have bought the people of other Central American nations the precious time they need to strengthen their democracies. And in helping to thwart the aggressive designs of the Nicaraguan communists and their Soviet bloc accomplices, they have directly contributed to the safety of the United States and the American people. We owe the freedom fighters a vote of thanks, not a vote of no confidence. I cannot accept the House action as final, for I cannot believe that it reflects the informed and considered will of the American people. Next week, the effort to provide aid to the freedom fighters will move to the Senate. Our proposal as it now stands, including its provision to give the freedom fighters defensive weapons immediately, represents the absolute minimum of assistance to which I can agree. Any less would be too little. Any further delay would be too late. We speak not of a game in which one side can call time out to consider its options. We speak of a life and death struggle for liberty. The Soviet gunships will not halt their operations while we debate. The House vote must be reversed and soon. I urge the Senate to vote on the aid program promptly and the House to take the matter up once again at its next item of business. Some of our critics insist that even the minimal assistance we're requesting is too much and that negotiations and negotiations alone are the answer. But I must remind them that the Sandinista communists have already concluded negotiations in 1979 with the Organization of American States. In that agreement, the communists promised to conduct a peaceful, non-aligned foreign policy and to hold free elections. They have done neither. I must remind our critics that our administration has pursued active diplomacy, holding 10 high-level meetings with the Sandinista regime. Always the communists have refused serious negotiations. I must further remind our critics that promising diplomatic proposals were on the table when Thursday's damaging House vote took place. President Duarte of El Salvador and his Central American colleagues had proposed that a dialogue take place simultaneously between the freedom fighters and the Nicaraguan communists, between the Salvadoran government and its communist opponents, and between the Nicaraguan communists and the United States. We support this initiative, but the Nicaraguan communists have refused to take part. So I would say to our critics, join me in providing all the resources necessary, and that means military aid to the freedom fighters, to bring the Nicaraguan communists to the table and to make them honor the international promise they have already made to the Organization of American States. The communists themselves have shown again and again that diplomacy alone is not enough. As your president, I cannot leave my successor, I cannot leave our children to face grave dangers and agonizing decisions that with a minimum of foresight and courage could have been averted. The freedom fighters have done much. They ask little. Let us act to help them together, Democrats and Republicans, and let us act now. Then we can get on with the business of lending a hand to our neighbors as they attack poverty and create economic opportunity for their people. Until next week, thanks for listening, and God bless you. Cut.
Well, I'll tell you, I just heard this morning from one of the fellows who was working hard for us up on the hill, one of the congressmen up there, that he said that one of the things he was running into more and more was this thing of that we should, you know, be pushing more for the Jackson plan, the Kissinger was being followed up on it, to help, you know, with the economy and so forth down there. Well, good Lord, that's what I made the trip about in 1981, yeah. to, to, to do this. And so I told him we were all for it. Well, he said he thinks that between now and the next vote, if we make this more public, that what we really want to do is have a program, an economic program of help down there, yeah. get rid of that pervasive poverty all over the country. So that's when I stuck the line in. That's good. So we'll start doing it. Good. Next week we'll win. That's right. And then we'll come back. Yeah. Did you hear Tip's press conference yesterday with a group of congressmen? Uh, At a press conference demanding that I cancel the underground oh, yeah. nuclear test. That's due today, isn't it? Yeah. It's supposed yeah. to take place at 11 o'clock in our time. But well, that's taken place already. Because when I got the call during dinner last night, I said, shoot the bomb. <laughs> right on. <All> right. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. See you next week. Goodbye.